and uh do you have clear unrefutable evidence that there is racism at Marta because this is a serious allegation oh yes Ralph we do we have okay. well you got the wrong show you need to call Jose Jose can help you Jose? I talk about him, but Jose can get hey, some action. They put Neil Bork's uh, literature out of creative loafing in our lockers, man. <laughs> Ooh, now that's dangerous. You mean to tell me they cut an article out of creative loafing and put it in your locker? Oh, and yeah. it's got Neil Bork's SWAB on it? Neil Bork. Oh, man. Be careful out there, Marta, man. But you need unrefutable, you know, undisputable evidence, like the evidence today in the New York Times on the front page. They had some evidence today. The New York Times... Uh, had an article here by uh, Robert Pear. He uh, reports that New York admits to racial steering in housing. And uh, this is a common problem, and people say that the system is not corrupt, the system is not racist, but this is the type of unrefutable, you know, indisputable type of evidence that does not get discussed. You know, when people start talking about their fair share or this particular system of capitalism and all these other vulturistic isms, you know, but it doesn't get talked about much, you know. Hey, Chuck at Mars Brown, how you living? What's up, Ralph? You got it, doctor. Two questions. Run it. I've made my I made up my mind about the candidate I'm going to support this year. You go you going to go ahead and vote for John Lewis. <laughs> it ain't got that bad yet. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and it's not you're talking George... about the presidential candidate. Yeah, yeah, and it's not George Bush. Okay, so now you're not gonna vote for George Bush. No. And you, uh, what about uh, Clinton? Uh, well, that's my boy. What about Perot? Well, that's who I got to ask you about. All right. Um, his uh, his following scares me, man. And I, you know, I've thought about it for a couple of weeks, and uh, I'm just trying to figure out what it is that uh is so alluring to this guy who, I mean, he he says nothing, and he and he looks, you know, he looks like even less. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, you know, what is it that he's, is, is, is the country that desperate for? Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, the country is. You know, once upon a time, the old John Ford movie about Mr. Smith goes to Washington, starring Jimmy Stewart. Once upon a time, people, the populace, would come up with a mandate. They would find a person and say, hey, why don't we send the corner druggist? Or why don't we send the local insurance salesman? Or why don't we send the neighborhood doctor to Washington? Because this particular person is doing such a fine job in the community. And he could represent us so much better than one of these sleazy suckers that we've got up there already. But unfortunately, Perot has inverted the equation. And he has come to the people saying he is the man. See, that's what scares me about him. There was no mandate, no groundswell to go to parole, he came to the people. He was a self, he is a self-appointed messiah, and these people uh, and are that's, buying it. That's very dangerous. But see, the people you find in the parole, in, the people you find in the, the in the parole campaigns, by and large, are maladjusted, uh, insecure type people who really think they've got some clout, and they're going to link up with other insecure, maladjusted people, and with a whole bunch of insecure, maladjusted people linking hands, they think they're going to have some clout. But in essence, they're going to have a, a, a maladjusted and insecure candidate and a maladjusted and insecure campaign, and he's going to lose. He's already slipping in the polls. All the votes are indicating that Clinton's going to win this thing. My prediction of Clinton, clearly Clinton, Clearly, Clinton in November is going to it's going to come true. You can see the votes are going to be split between those who want to hang on to George Bush. And speaking of George Bush, he was on the front page of the New York Times today talking about he's mad, he's sick, he boiled over today saying that he's tired. Bush says he's sick of not getting credit for his accomplishments. He's sick and tired. I've worked my heart out as president of the United States. An angry President Bush told a Republican group in Detroit Monday, and they got him on the front page of the New York Times with his fist clenched and his mouth open, and he. He's raging. He ought to be mad. He hadn't done a thing, you know. <laughs> and if he's sick, well, I mean, you know, I, I must be dead because I'm sick of him. Hey, man. Now, look. The big question, Holmes. All right. The big question. Big question. All right, man. Uh, I need them Braves tickets. Oh, that's the big question. That's the big question, Holmes. You know, Chuck, I like you, man. You came to my first anniversary party. I think your best chance is to get tickets to uh, to the Braves game coming up. Come to the come to the sickle cell remote, man. Okay, give me the details. All right, you need to be here on the fifteenth of July about six thirty because we're going to broadcast live in the parking lot. Got a big band, League of Decency. We're going to have barbecue ribs and seafood from This Is It and Barker's hot dogs and Gobbler's uh, turkey delectables and 
oh, man, we're going to have spring water from the Poland Spring Water Company, and Gorin's ice cream are going to come out, and they're going to give us ice cream. And we're going to have, like, oozles and boozles and goozles of tickets to give away. Let me, let me, let me anoint somebody tonight. Let me anoint someone new, a new, a first-time caller for these Braves tickets, all right? I see you on the 15th. All right, Doctor. All right. Thank you for asking, man. He was disappointed. I'm sorry. Okay, Carl, we're going to take a real quick break, and I'll be right back to you, okay? All right. All right, hold tight. 233-WGST is the number. 1-800-FON-WGST. I beat your brother Ralph from Ben Hill. And it's about 741, 78 degrees in the city. Give me a call. 233-WGST. Hi, this is Skip Carey for the Skip Carey Report on News Radio 640 WGST. Every weekday morning at 820, I get up early just for you to give you the inside analysis on the Braves. Join me tomorrow morning right here on 640 WGST. I don't know what it is about long summer weekends. Maybe it's that extra day makes people feel like a million bucks, and since they're so rich, they forget that their 75 clunker isn't a 92 rule. So they fire the chauffeur and hit the road for a day of fun family togetherness until reality decides to rear its ugly head, and they wind up stuck on the side of the road with Dad barbecuing his hands under the hood while Mom tries to keep the kids from finger-painting the dog with a melted fudgesicle, which is why I recommend hitting the Hit the Road sale at Nationwide. Wise Auto Parts. They've got store-wide savings on things like brake parts, tune-up kits, and accessories. So before you hit the road, go to Nationwide, unless you've always wanted a fudge-colored dog. But hey, it's your call. Hey, guys, don't just get it. Get it right. Nationwide Auto Parts. Right now, AC and IEPCO oil filters, two for five dollars, limit two. Nationwide oil, 69 cents a quart, limit 12. Get to the Hit the Road sale now through Saturday and get it right at Nationwide. Tom, on entering the Shane Company the other day, the first thing I noticed yes. were the large number of showcases filled with empty settings. No stones. Where are the stones? In the wedding sets. Yes. Yes. We've got hundreds and hundreds of uh, bridal sets on display. We've got the largest selection in the state. Where are the stones, you ask? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, we, for the most part, don't have them mounted up. We want the customer to be able to first select the style setting that uh, they want, and like I say, we've got an enormous selection. Then they can choose the stone. They're able to look at and examine the stone loose. There's no prongs to hide any flaws. They know exactly what they're getting, and they can choose something that no one else will have that'll be uniquely their own. Remember, we won't be beat in price, and I guarantee it. The Shane Company on Wendy Hill Road, the first exit north of the perimeter on I-75. Go west at Wendy Hill. Open Monday through Friday till 8, Saturday and Sunday till 5. Atlanta's first news is on News Radio 640 WGST. Use it for traffic and weather together at the top and bottom of each hour and on the fives. Atlanta's First News, early mornings on News Radio 640 WGST. Welcome back to the Ralph from Ben Hill Show. Our telephone number is 233 WGST. <laughs> news and burning issues. 233 WGST, 1-800-FON WGST. I tell you, boy, jury duty is dangerous nowadays, you know. Jury duty is real dangerous, I tell you. The jurors down there at the uh, Fat Frank Redding case down there, Representative Fat Frank Redding, allegedly, and he's on trial for allegedly taking $1,000 in cash from an undercover agent posing as a strip bar owner who wanted to stop a bill that would have put him out of business. Uh, according to these tapes that these folks are listening to, jury duty is kind of dangerous. Fat Frank Redden is alleged to have said, and check this out, <laughs> I got the vote. He said, according to uh, the tapes, that he could help agents, you know, get what they needed to get because uh, I got the vote. Referring to his uh, badge of identification as a legislator, Mr. Redding allegedly said, I got the name tag. See, this blank is what it takes to pass a blank bill. Oh, man. Oh, jury duty is dangerous. Whatever happened to the old-fashioned juries where you just sit down there, you don't have to listen to profanity, you don't have to go through the gory details of a Hans Krauss-type sex trial, you know? Jury duty is dangerous. All right, Carl and Chambly, you're on News Radio 640 WGST. 
Hello, Ram. Yes, sir. How are you doing today? Living large, doctor. Ah, uh, yeah. I was just calling. I was uh, listening to your show the other night. I understand that uh, you're a fellow Morehouse man. So am I. Yes, sir. You know, so I decided to give you a call today. I was Let the talking. house roll on. Why me, man? Let I the mean. house roll on. You were talking about the 100 black men in their organization over there. Heck of a group. I'm the just mad because I'm not. I'm mad because I'm not in it, man. Well, what I was thinking is that you have to kind of do it on your own. You know, start your own little 100 black men group. I I understand there are more than 100. They got about 300 or 400 of them, you know. But it's really prestigious. Every time you look around, you know, they got this little button on their little pail. They got the one and the zero and the zero and the black men on it, you know. But uh, I'm happy to be a servant to the 100 black men. I don't have to be in it. I can help That's them exactly. outside. You know, uh, I feel the same way. If you can only participate in any way that you can, give your own little part. That's right. You know, I'm going to definitely. I'm going to definitely do my share to make sure that dome is full for that big football well, game. Well, that's what I was enthused up. about the other day because I was listening to you and you were talking about. Uh, Man, I look forward to parties. I'm going to be honest to you. I look for. I look forward to parties. And it got me fired up. I look forward to like the Fourth of July, Oldham, Uncle Harvest House. I look forward to homecoming and all the parties that happen around it because I work hard. Uh huh. And when you work hard, you look forward to there the relaxation. Go. I don't hang out. Every night, there you go. You know, I'm not in the clubs until the lights come on. There you I don't go. drink the last drink when they have the last call for alcohol every night, like some of these suckers do. Uh -huh. I don't put on my last suit to go out and spend my last dime every night, like some of these other clowns do. Wake up broke, but I do look forward to a big set. I look forward to a big jam, and this thing at the dome is gonna be a monster home. Well, I, I do believe the black community should participate in uh, doing things together. Well, and, that's and, right. See, and all, having family-oriented uh, type type organizations. All and, the and, ingredients. And, and, are there. Like that. You're correct. All the ingredients are right there. Family, beautiful women are going to be there, you know, right. fun, music, and sports. Well, I mean, that's all it takes to get us into place, you know. As and if it's not sold out at the last minute, I want to make sure they pass out free tickets, man, because that place needs to be packed. Well, I hadn't uh, gone to any of those games in the past. I listened uh, to the uh, to the advertisements and things like that. Home, but I never the, went. You missed the monster. This year, you got me fired up. Homeboy, <laughs> there's going to be so many Negroes in Atlanta, they might make two or three Tarzan movies that weekend, man. When, when you were that. saying about how we uh, how we partied at Morehouse. Oh, you, you know, know that. Said, now, this guy, he knows what he's talking about. Man, look here. So I, I, I brought, brought dancers. dance back down here. Yeah, I brought I said, dancers from D.C. to Atlanta, man. I said, I'd like, I'd like to ask some of his... his uh, some of the people that you showed that dance, did you really bring it back? Yeah, no question. <laughs> no question. As a matter of fact, you know, you would think that, that the, slow is on, is the slow is going to always be the slow, right? Mm -hmm. I brought a variation to the slow drag back from D.C. in 1969. Mm -hmm. I brought something back called a dip. You ever dip on a slow record? Yeah, I've seen it done. I've never done it that uh, way. I've take, never it, done it that it way. It takes a man to dip, and no, I brought no. the dip back home. <laughs> no, you got to know how to crook, how to groove nice and easy. Right, that's right. They, they, especially when they're playing like the Dale, Stay in My Corner. I know that's an oh, oldie, man, but goodie. What talking about? But when Marvin Jr. hits that long note, and you grab that lady, and y'all cheek to cheek, and the sweat is rolling, man, and you look around, and you wink at your butt, and he's got his lady in his arms, and all of a sudden, man, say, stay. You go down on that dip home. That's, I can't that's, dip. That's I, the round from Ben Hill dip. I can dip. I have. <laughs> I won a couple of dance contests in my day. Okay. <laughs> I, I bet you do that old James too. Brown with your I feet can... wiggling and your hands on your hips and things, huh? No, uh, no, nah, nah, none of that. Well, Carl, I look, <laughs> no, forward, I look forward to seeing out. you. I look forward to seeing you. If I don't at the uh, dome, I look forward to seeing you at my set. I'm going to have a big party coming up here. The station is behind me. Mm -hmm. Anytime you white folks get behind you, you know, it's going to be a party, man. We're going to have police protection. Ain't going to be nobody calling dope police on us because we're going to have the police with well, us. Where is this right? party going to take place? It's going to take place right here in the parking lot on uh, the 15th. That's a Wednesday. That'll give you time to save a little money out your paycheck. The 15th of uh, uh, next week? No, the 15th of July. That's two weeks from now. The 15th of July? Yeah, in uh -huh. two weeks. In okay. two weeks. 14 okay. more days. Okay. okay. 14 I'm, more days. I'm about to leave town in the morning and go to a family reunion. Okay. So I, the only thing I'm thinking about right now is this weekend. <laughs> now, that's a really big time for me. You know, I heard a dude tell me the other day, black people only think about three days. Payday, off day, and holiday. <laughs> oh, well, you know, if you got everything kind of in set, you know, right, right. I kind of keep a plan. Well, there you go. I make I make a plan out for a series of uh, period of time. Well, don't be a fool and plan on being here on the fifteenth, all right? I'll definitely be there. All right, peace and plan on being at the dome, man. Don't be a fool, you know. Two three three WGST one eight hundred F O N WGST. Let's get serious. I see here the new Los Angeles police chief promises to heal the city's wounds. Willie Williams, the first black police chief of Los Angeles, promised yesterday to heal the wounds of a battered city while reforming a demoralized 
Department of Police criticized for racism and brutality. Now, has he bitten all more than he can chew? I mean, you've got a job description, right? I mean, they just, they just added some work to this man's uh, job description here. Healing the city. His job is to be a law enforcement officer. Lead a healing to other folks, you know. I mean, it's good to want to heal. But, I mean, come on. He's about to doom himself trying to take on more than he can do, you know. Rick, this Tanner's Company picnic was a great idea. And I, Cocky Doodle, your official spokes chicken, am honored to be here. I still don't know how his name got on the invitation list. Doodle, Tanner's can cater a company picnic better than anyone. And it's a gorgeous day to have our own company celebration. And that spread sure looks tempting. With our rotisserie chicken, ribs, fingers, wings, fresh veggies, party platters. Why, Tanner's Chicken Rotisserie has the perfect menu for company and family gatherings like this. Uh-oh, look out. <laughs> I heard that Miss Sybil from accounting takes the sack race very seriously. Oof, what a wallop. Hey, listen, boss. We should push this Tanner's takeout and catering idea for company picnics, family outings, evenings at Chastain. Doodle, did I just hear a good idea come out of your mouth? <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry, boss. Cocky Doodle here. Listen, this is big time stuff, so pay attention. Check the paper this weekend for Tanner's Chicken Rotisserie, your turn, free offer. Personally, I like this free concept. <laughs> Works for me. Tanner's Chicken Rotisserie, now open in Tucker. Backyard America, lots of cooking going on. Backyard America, when Dixie calls it home. Put on the steaks and cut up the pies. It's time for eating and friendly ties. Backyard America, when Dixie calls it home. Celebrate the 4th of July with great food from Win Dixie, your low price leader. Win Dixie's Backyard America. Grab your friends and family because Winn-Dixie is planning an incredible 4th of July. Fire up the grill for fresh pork spare ribs. Three and a half to five pound slabs are just 98 cents a pound. Plus, what's a cookout without a juicy watermelon? Harvest fresh red ripe watermelons are only $2.99 each. Ice down check drinks while they're 98 cents a six pack. And for your convenience, we'll be open regular hours July 4th. You'll find everyday low prices and extra cookout savings at Winn-Dixie, America's supermarket. You are listening to News Radio 640 WGST. This is the Ralph from Big Hill Show. We're back at you. Hot news and burning issues. The full bank of calls. And we need to go straight to the top with as many callers as we can. So let's get right to the board and talk to uh, my main man. Bubba and Buckhead, hey. you're on News Radio 640 WGST. Ralph, my man. Bubba. I have never called the talk show before. What is your problem? I never called, but I tell you what, you are the greatest. You got the guts to speak out. Do you mean it? I mean it, man. Do you really mean it? I'm telling you, you know, you know. Would you write me a check? How much you want? Just five dollars for sickle cell. Don't put my name on the check. Just come out here and give me a check for five dollars if you really like me. Where do I send it? You just bring it here. You can send it to News Radio 640 WGST. Don't put my name on it. Put sickle cell, sickle cell society of Georgia, or the sickle cell society, whatever. Just put the sickle cell disease. You just put sickle cell on there if if you like me. I tell you what. I got a check today for one thousand three hundred dollars from Richard Andrews of R S Andrews. He's got a heart, man. Well, check He's it got out. a heart. Check it out, Ralph. Yeah. I'm, I'm related to Ross Perot, so I can write you a bigger check. Okay, that. okay, okay. <laughs> so you're related to Ross Perot. Hey. You got a blank sheet of paper over at the house? Hey, look. I got a blank sheet of paper. We're going to start with a blank sheet of paper. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's Ross Perot's uh, platform, yeah. a blank yeah. sheet of paper. He's a scary dude. I'm you know, I'm scared he might make an airplane out of that blank sheet of paper. <laughs> <laughs> I got you down, Bubba. Hey, I look forward to the check now. Just $5 sickle cell. Hey, live large, man. Peace, brother. You live large and prosper. Justin, on a mobile phone, you're on News Radio 640 WGST. Hey, y'all, yeah, I would like to know what are y'all doing. I'd like to know what are y'all doing for Red, what are, what are y'all doing for Red Dog and Narcotic Section to keep the drugs off the street? Good question, Justin. Good question. Red Dogs are mad at me. Not because of uh, anything that I have done, but something that I've said, Justin. Uh, once upon a time, I was real good friends, and I think I'm still good friends with uh, Captain B.J. Rocker, who is the commander of the elite Red Dog Division, Narcotics uh, Street, you know, Street Crime Division of the uh, police department here in the city of Atlanta. But B.J. Captain Rocker used to come down here with me, man, and we did the snitches hour, and we would really clean up the streets, Justin. But 
I think one of his bosses got mad when I said something about an eight-year-old kid that got killed out in Techwood when the police just shot through the window. Not Techwood, East Lake Meadows. Little eight-year-old eight -year boy got killed, and I made some comments about trigger-happy police, and then the Red Dogs got mad at me. But I'm still behind the Red Dogs. Uh, Captain Rocker offered to let me ride with him a couple of times, and I'm going to take him up on that offer, and I'm going to get him back down here. I won't, I'm not going to get the Black Cats, and I'm not going to get anybody else. I want to get Captain B.J. Rocker down here, and we're going to do another serious snitches hour. Maybe we can do it one day before I do my show, you know, but uh, that's a good question, man. Good question. Let's go to Daldridge, Southwest Atlanta. You're on News Radio 640 WGST. Brother Ralph. Brother Tick. How you doing, my brother? Living large. Living large. Hey, man, first thing I want to do is recommend, uh, commend you on your program. Man. Well, thank you, brother. Man, you got the world at your feet. No, I don't. Yes, no, you I do, don't. brother. Let you me got ask my you mom at your feet. Brother. Do you remember those days, and a lot of people think I'm lying, and I want you to testify here. Do you remember those days once upon a time when your face and my face and maybe a handful of other faces were the only dark-skinned faces at Southwest High? Oh, yeah. Do you remember the trials and the tribulations that we endured? I remember those trials. Are we brother. better people as a result of sacrificing our youth? We, we are much better people. I mean to tell you, home, we sacrificed the best years of our lives out there befriending white folks and teaching them little Negro tricks, you know, and letting them learn, <laughs> letting them learn the real deal. You know, I look around at people like Gregory Sutton. He's oh, yeah. rocking and rolling now, big time minister doing oh, God's yeah. work. Oh, That's yeah. the kind of man that needs the accolades that you're trying to put on me. So I'm down here just entertaining. Gregory is actually healing and, and, and saving souls and oh, doing yeah. God's work. You folks like right. yourself out in the community and your moms, y'all still holding tight over there on Lynn Valley, over in that neighborhood, man. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. People don't believe me, Tick, when I tell them that that whole side of town, once upon a time, was white, and it went black in a year. In a year. And now, why did the white people leave? Because they don't know what they were doing, brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jesus said, man. It's like Jesus said when Jesus was on the cross, man. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You got that. As long right. as they've been doing it, Tick, they experts at it. Hey, hold on for a second. I want to talk to y'all to add. My main man, Gene Michaels, is in here. He's been in the business 25 years. I got two, and he mad and mad and things at me because I got... Happy anniversary, right? Oh, 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 okay, okay, oh, okay. Thank you, G. First for news, and first on your AM dial. Atlanta's first news is right here every morning. News Radio 640 WGST. Atlanta's trusted news, traffic, and weather station. Cloudy skies and 78 degrees. I'm Gene Michaels. News Radio 640 WGST. Tomorrow, partly cloudy and the high will be around 91 degrees. We'll have a chance of afternoon showers. Atlanta's official three-day weather forecast is coming up. Here's what's happening now at 8 o'clock. The Fulton County Commission gives its approval to a tentative agreement on building a new Olympic stadium. But as News Radio 640 WGST's Fulton County correspondent Bill Edge reports, Though the agreement did not have the board's unanimous approval, it did pass. The preliminary agreement calls for the Atlanta Committee for the Olympic Games to build a new stadium, pay off the old one, and then tear it down. The commission voted 6-1 to one to approve the letter of intent. Voting no, however, was Commissioner Emma Darnell, who says she remains concerned about ACOG's hiring practices. If ACOG was simply open up the purchasing and the personnel operations, so that the people of Fulton County, who have given up quite a bit. from Ben Hill with the Talk How You Like Underground Posse. It's 805, and we're here to take your calls at News Radio 640 WGST. My telephone number is 233-9478. That's 233-WGST. I want to take your calls right now. Let's talk how we like. I got tickets here for the Atlanta Braves and the Pittsburgh Pirates. 
I've also got tickets here for you and your family. I got four, that's right, admission for four to the United States Space and Rocket Center. And I saw an ad in the paper for this very ticket that I'm giving away over there in Huntsville, Alabama. This is going to include a tour of the center, a bus tour of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, and admission to an Omnimax movie presentation in the Space Dome Theater. These can be yours if you dial 233-WGST. Good news today in the paper. And I was thinking about boycotting the Atlanta Journal and Constitution unless they mention my second anniversary tomorrow. If they don't have my second anniversary and a big old picture of me and Ralph's done so good for this town and Ralph's been so great for Atlanta and the people love him so much, and if they don't do that tomorrow, then I'm going, per I'm not telling you. I am not telling you to. Don't even start it. I can hear him now. Ralph from Ben Hale started the boycott of the Piper. No. I'm saying that if they don't have a mention, I mean a big mention, of my uh, second anniversary in this jive paper, I'm not going to read it anymore. Quite frankly, I like the Gwinnett paper, that, uh, that daily report thing. The pictures are real clear. Even the color pictures look good. You know, I mean crystal clear. They got a picture of a street in the business section of the Gwinnett uh, paper, and they got like Mrs. Winters, and the sign is real clear. It's not fuzzy like the old color pictures you see in the Atlanta Journal. Anyway, in today's paper, I got a Ralph from Ben Hill Fred Sanford Big Dummy Award that I'm going to give to Gary Yandale. Got in there today's radio tips. Now check this out. He must think y'all are stupid. Gary Yandale must think you all are just, you know, y'all are just stupid, you know, if you, if you believe Gary Yandale, because these are his radio tips. Today's radio tips by Gary Yandale, and I'm going to give him the Ralph from Ben Hill Fred Sanford Big Dummy Award. You know, but a big dummy steering y'all folks around my show. He wants y'all to watch or listen to Atlanta Hotline uh, talking about uh, some old stuff, Atlanta League of Women Voters and some other mess, the Motor Voter Bill, and classical pop, the Cleveland Classical Orchestra. Come on, man. Now, he thinks this sucker, you know, oh, I see it. This is the connection. He wants everybody to listen to WABE-FM. Now, come on. Gary Yandel, this is the hottest thing going in this town, and you know it. I wouldn't be here if this wasn't the hottest show in town at night. And you're going to steer the people all around my show. 6.30 tonight and 8 o'clock tonight. He don't have no radio tips for the daytime. You know what I'm saying? Then he's going to steer them around my show. You get the Ralph from Ben Hill, Fred Sanford, Big Dummy Award, Gary Yandel. And if you don't have something in the paper about me tomorrow, boy, I ain't even going to wrap my garbage cans in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution no more. But there's some good news on the front page of the journal, the one with the blue stripe. This missing boy, young Donald Mallory. He was uh, wandering away from his mama yesterday over at the town center mall, and uh, they sparked a big old search for the kid yesterday and last night and today. And Wade Metlock found him twice, but uh, <laughs> I think he's found now. Missing boy six turns up wet and hungry. He's on I-75. I guess he's trying to get out of town, you know. But thank God he's all right. We don't need many children. As these abortionists are killing around here. We need to save the ones that we got. And my hat's off to all of the people who went out there and helped to search for the kid in the woods out there near the Cobb Mall. Old Donald Mallory is home, safe and sound. He's all right. He's all right, all right? Let's go to Larry Smyrna. You're on News Radio 640 WGST. Yeah, how you doing, Ralph? Living large, Larry. Uh, this is my first time calling. Appreciate you checking in, Doctor. Uh, well, uh, I knew you probably remember a while back at, uh, when they had the Falcon draft up there at Frankie's. Yeah, yeah, I was up there. I saw you. That's the first time I saw you. Oh, you're talking about when they had the uh, Falcons draft. Right. WSB had a um, had a remote with Jeff Van Noten and everybody, and Eric Seidel, my boss man, made me get a mm -hmm. bullhorn and a WGST truck, and I crashed it with the bullhorn. I turned it out, didn't I? Yeah, you had them uh, keychains. Yeah, I ain't scared. <laughs> See, I ain't scared. I was out there by myself <laughs> around all them white folks, you know, and yeah. WSB and all. And I was just bullhorning everybody. I ain't scared, man. That's why I'm still here. That's why you got to I'd rather be dead than scared. Yeah, someone was talking about, okay, uh, like last week when the Falcon had it, I mean, uh, well, not the Falcon, but the Hawks. Hawks. Had, Hawks had blew. The, the Hawks blew on that draft. Yeah, but you know, I'm tired of sick of they always talking about, you know, that it's Adam Keith, they got how good he's supposed to be. I mean, you look at he, the, the school they played for, Stanford went on national TV. Now, how can you really say how good a guy is, you know, you're not having national attention? I can understand if you play for the ACC or powerhouse school. Right. You have to look at... Uh, who's describing what and what attributes they're giving. You know, when they say good, what do they mean? Big and bulky, inside guy. 
That means they're getting ready to make a move on some of the folks they already have. Personally, I think the Hawks have needed, and in, their, in order to compliment Dominique, and I hope Dominique retires as a Hawk, we need somebody to compliment Dominique in terms of filling up the basket. We don't need no more rebounders. We don't need no more muscle men. We don't need no Kevin McHale's. We don't need no Parishes and Cartwrights. We need some Jordans. We need some shooters. We need somebody to fill up the hoop. And this little sucker, Keith, man, it's, this, that's just something for the crowd. Well, they had a you know? golden opportunity to get a Brian Steele for either Harry Minor, Baby Jordan. They didn't, they didn't, want, they, they they didn't want Baby Jordan. Baby Jordan, you know, he hard to handle. Yeah. He hard to handle, but this sucker, you bring this sucker in from California who knows he doesn't deserve to be here, and then you tell him to do something, he's going to do whatever you say. But you bring in a cocky dude like Baby Jordan who knows he could be anywhere he wants to be, he ain't going to listen to what you got to say. Right. So they'd rather have somebody to listen to what they got to say and help to draw with the fans. You know, I noticed you see a lot of the, uh, the Omni was not filled. You see a lot of crowds that aren't capacity at the Omni because... A lot of the folks don't want to come out and see a whole bunch of black men. But when you bring some white boys in town, like whenever Boston comes to town, mm -hmm. the Omni pack. Right. You bring that big mountain man out there from Utah and them other white boys from Utah, then the Omni's pack. You can always tell when white folks come into the Omni to play basketball because Neil Bortz will be at the game. Neil don't come to the Cleveland Cavaliers game. He won't come to the Bulls or the Knicks game. But he'll come, and the only team that he'll come see that's all black is the Lakers. But when right. Utah or, uh, 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 or uh, Boston or any team that's white, and this is just a couple of them, he'll be at Denver, the Denver Nuggets. When they come in, you know, when they got some white boys, they'll be there, you know. And unfortunately, whenever the Hawks play the uh, Celtics, you ever been to the Omni when oh, the yeah. Hawks play the Celtics? Mm -hmm. Don't you see the majority of the people in the stands are white, but the majority right. of them have green on? Exactly. And that's a shame, man. But you know, somehow... I mean, that's like going to the Braves Stadium Friday, mm -hmm. you know, picking up a Poland Springwater clapper from me and going in there and seeing a bunch of Chicago Cub fans. Now, what kind of mess is that, man? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But these... I, and then we get Keith. That means we got... There's a possibility Atlanta can have an all-white team next year. Let, let me let me break you the line up down. Let me break the line up down for you. There's a possibility we can have an all-white team. Concat. Mm -hmm. Rasputin, the Mad Monk, Rasmussen, right. this Keith boy, Batman, little little Robin Adams Keith, whatever his name is, Keith. Mm -hmm. All right, you got him. And you got Volkov. And then we got one more white boy, right? Who is the other white uh, boy? Well, they, they got uh, Jeff Leonard, but he, he's... Uh, Leonard Skinner. No, he's, he, they put yeah. him on the retirement. So we could have one more white boy. Well, you they know? might try to get stuck him. <laughs> well, uh, Michael Jordan helped us out on that, didn't he? <laughs> hey, appreciate you calling, Larry. Right, nice you. talking with you. Let's go to Tom. You're on News Radio 640 WGST, Tom. Hey, how you doing, Ralph? Tom, I'm all right. Oh, man, talking to you. Yeah, I've been listening to you for a long time. First time calling. Thank you, Dr. I'm getting a lot of them tonight. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them. Uh, appreciate it. I need them. That's my new blood. I'm like a vampire. You know, talk shows need new blood. <laughs> new <laughs> blood. Trying to, to live life. This is you. There you go. There you go. Well, I want to talk to you about, I heard a brief a minute ago you were talking about the new, the hammer is going to be at the dome. Man, we're going to blow the top off that dome, man. Who's going to be playing? I don't even know. It's the first I heard about it was the night. You're you not going to hear nothing about it, home. If you're waiting to hear it from the folks, the folks ain't going to tell you. <laughs> you got to do like we used to do once upon a time. Now, you about my age, Tom. Okay. It used to be the Magnolia Ballroom over there in Vine City. Ray Charles would come to town, and the place would be packed with folks from, like, the five states surrounding Georgia. And it wouldn't even be a mention on the radio or TV or in the paper, but we spread the word by word of mouth. We knew what was happening. Sammy Davis Jr. used to come in town. Oh, we have a big event, you know, and folks would turn out. Black folks would turn out. We wouldn't get the publicity like some of these other suckers be getting, man. The Dome is going to be packed with the Southern football team, Southern University down there in uh, Baton Rouge, the Southern University Jaguars, and the South Carolina State Bulldogs coming up here with both of their bands and all of their fine women and fine alumni. They're coming up here, man, and we're going to pack the dome. We rocked Bobby Dodd, uh, Grant Field over there last year when they had South Carolina State and uh, Southern. It was bad. I mean, it was, it was like a festivity thing. You know, it was like you just walking up and down, man. It was T-shirt vendors and sisters from all over the world, and everybody was cool. No rocks thrown, no bottles thrown, no windows broken, no stores looted. We had a good time. And the same thing's going to happen in the dome home. We're going to be coming in from Birmingham. They're going to be coming in from Baton Rouge all over. The dome is going to be packed. And then the next day, the Saints play the Falcons in the dome. So that's like, I, it's, a, it's a possibility that in two days, the dome will break all all records in the country in terms of a facility having back-to-back -back events. And we're going to be part of it, man. So you're saying the next day the Saints and Falcons. So that means this game is on the 19th. 
This, I think, yeah, if you've got a calendar, I don't want to put out any misinformation, but if you've got a calendar and that Falcons and Saints home game is on the 19th, then it's, then it's the next the day before. Well, yeah, Saints and Falcons is the 20th. Okay, so it's the 19th. So it is the 19th. No so, question, no okay. doubt about it. And I'm telling you, you're going to have to look because everybody, I got a T-shirt, souvenir T-shirts from each one of the 100 black men classic games and everything. I want you to look for the Ralph from Ben Hill T-shirt. I'm going to see if I can hook me up a, a shirt and have me like a Jaguar and a Bulldog and then Ralph from Ben Hill in the middle holding them apart. You know, and the hundred black men. So I don't know. I, they might lock me up, but I'm gonna, well, I, I, I got to get out there because the t-shirt salesmen get all the play. Yeah. If you notice, man, all the sisters be stopping by, and instead of trying to sell them a shirt, they say, "Girl, you're so fine, you can have this shirt." <laughs> <laughs> hey, girl, what, what hotel are you in tonight? Huh? Take this table, baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm going with you. Well, that's the kind of thing it's gonna be, man. It's gonna be big fun parties all over the city. A big party in the dome. It's gonna be for a good cause. You know, the hundred black men adopted. Uh, Archer High School, and they've been sending kids to college right. and doing the right thing, man, over there in Perry Homes. And, you know, it makes no sense for us not to get behind them. They used to deal with FAMU and uh, Tennessee State, two, right. good, two good schools. But right. those two schools decided to go out on their own and keep the money for Tennessee State and FAMU. That's fine. You know, Tennessee State needs to boom, and FAMU needs to boom. But I'm for keeping the money in the community. And the 100 black men's game, which is going to be the same day the Tennessee State FAMU game, the 100 black men's game is going to keep the money right here in Atlanta. So you said it's going to be the same day again this year? Same day. They, you know how colored folk can't get their act together. <laughs> many Negro, many days you got on that calendar. Look like these black folks ought to have days. Like, like well, fam, you had a game the, the week before. But, you know, uh, these... Uh, the week after. Uh, these, but these Negroes going to bump heads. But it's enough Negroes to go around, don't you think? <laughs> well, I, I think so it is. Like, last year, see, I ended up going to the Tennessee State Fam U game last year. Well, you blew, baby. You I blew. guess I did. <laughs> and I understand they lied about the attendance. Did they? Yeah, I heard they lied about it. I, I, I there were several seats left over That's there. That's what I'm the saying. Now. And, and we jammed at Georgia Tech home. Yeah. We had a wave. I ain't never seen a wave in a split stadium. But we had a wave <laughs> at Georgia Tech, Grant Field. And, I mean, we the, where I was sitting, I was up there with the uh, VIPs. And uh, we had barbecue and potato chips, dill pickles, and slaw. And it was free, clean bathrooms. And everybody was mellow, man. It's going to be a big event, man. Look forward to seeing you there. Well, I'm going to go to, I'm a, I'm a go to the Southern SC State game this year. There you go. I, think she, I'll be, I hope to see you there, right? I, 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 tell, I tell you what's going to be the highlight of the game. What's going to be the highlight? Please bring you some binoculars, because I know that yeah. dome, you know, you're going to be sitting way up there where them pigeons are. If I already have my ticket, right? That's now. right. <laughs> now, now, get you some binoculars. All right. And when them girls come out there with them matching stockings, all they have, like, different color sisters. They be, like, light skin, dark skin, all of the major rest, like, different colors of the rainbow. You know how sisters come in, everything from paper sack brown to, to uh, pecan brown to high, to high yellow, high yellow. But all of them have on the same color stockings, and all they live are like biggest Chaka Khan's legs, and they come out there with them them uh, parasols. Home, that'll give you nightmares, brother. Get your binoculars ready. Get you some Kleenex, because I know they're going to fog up, all right? They're going to fog up? They're going to fog up, all. <laughs> hey, hey, tell your lady, says, look here, girl, I'm finna look. You know what, <laughs> what you looking at? Don't worry about it, baby. I'm looking, you know what I'm saying? Well, she, she knows I like to read the whole lot of menus. I only eat in one place. Hey, uh, there you go. Appreciate the call, Tom. Yeah, keep living large, man. I will, Doctor. Right, bye-bye. This is Tom Hughes. Missed the news station this morning. Mr. Bush restates his pro-life stand. No, I, I am not in favor of Roe Wade, and, uh, and I would uh, like to see a decision go the other way on it. Health warnings on hair dye and chlorinated water. Princess Di turns 31 today, trapped by her kids. Perhaps it's going to be better for those two boys to, to stay even in a sham of a marriage. And Madonna was out of her league in the new flick, A League of Their Own. I absolutely never played baseball my entire life, so I had to start from scratch. If you miss a morning, you miss a lot. Atlanta's first news on News Radio 640 WGST. Man, bottom of the ninth, score is tied, and I got to get out of here. Terry, the game is just getting good. And if I wait till the game is over, do you know how long it takes me to get out of the parking lot? What are you doing in the parking lot? Where else am I supposed to park my car if I don't park it in the parking lot? That's one of the dumbest things I've heard you do since you got lost in Stone Mountain. Hey, who knew the road went in a circle? For driving your car to a ball game? Why didn't you take Marta? Well, my car's more convenient. Missing the end of the game doesn't sound all that convenient to me. Yeah, but I don't know how to get here on Marta. What? You just get off at the Georgia State Station and walk over, or you get off at Five Points and transfer to the stadium shuttle. It's got its own lane, and it's free, man. Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> look at that. Base is loaded two men out. Terry, you better get going if you want to miss the car. Oh, man. Say, hey, Terry, if you hurry, you just might be able to catch the end of the game on the radio. No matter what event you plan to attend in Atlanta, 
take Marta. It really is smarter. The pitch. Swung and there's a drive. Deep right field. That ball's gone. It's 5-1. 640 WGST, home of the Braves. This is Shay. Go to the phone now and call Ralph at 233-WGST. WGST. Hey, how you doing, Ralph? Living large, Brent. Good man. Thank you. You're talking to the original Brent from Ben Hill. Uh-oh, the original Brent from Ben Hill. <laughs> yeah, back in 1961. Grew up as a little boy down there. What street? Uh, lived on Butner Road. Butner Road. Good street. Good street. Yeah. I know almost exactly. Did you live near the village of St. Joseph? Mm, no, we were back towards Camelton. Okay, okay. Uh, right. right. Uh, right close to... Uh, that is Ben Hill. Yeah, right in Wa where Wallace Road comes across. Yeah, right, exactly. And that's down there. Okay, yeah, there's a rock church down there and a dirt road on the other end of Nisky Lake, like Tail Road and all of them streets kind of intersect back behind. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I was. I get back down there every every other day or so doing some work. And so oh, where, where you live now, Brent? I, I'm up in Marietta now. Brent from Ben Hill moved to Marietta, ran from us, Brent. Shame on you, dude. No, that's why I'm calling. I wanted to tell you a neat story story about my little boy who's seven. Let me hear it, man. You might, you might, you, oh, this sound like one of them, give me the brave ticket stars. Come on with it. Well, he's seven years old, and, right. and he goes to elementary school, but uh, with all the talk the past month about racial this and racial that, you know, and blacks and whites hating each other and violence and everything, I just feel like everybody needs to get back to the way he thinks about racial, you know, racial colors and everything. He doesn't say black and white. His little friends are brown. And we're and we're beige, <laughs> you know, and 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 he gets along with everybody, and everybody gets along with him. And I think if more people thought like children, it'd be a whole lot better world. You know, you're absolutely right. I keep going back to the kindergarten philosophy. We learned everything we needed to know in kindergarten. You know, if it's not yours, don't mess with it. If you pick it up, put it back. If you mess it up, clean it up. All of those things. And and, and we're not black. We're beige. I mean, we're brown, and he's beige. I got some tickets for you, man. That sounds cool. All I need is a sob story, man, just to, just to get me all mushy. I'll send you to the stadium. My my producer, Liz Ginneman, will pick this call up. Brent on a mobile phone just ripped me off with a story about a seven-year-old who uh, thinks in terms of beige and not black and white. Hey, Mac in Decatur, you're on News Radio 640 WGST. How you doing, Ralph? Living large, Mac. Just touching bases with you. Just got back in town from California. Oh, my man, my man. What's going on out there in Cali? Oh, uh, it was shaking. It, it was, was shaking. shaking. Yeah. I know it was shaking. I know it was shaking. I, get out of Dodge. <laughs> I, I know it was shaking. I went out. My uh, my son was graduating. Oh, so, where, where did he graduate? Um, San Diego is a, um, um, a junior, middle school. Oh, I just... So no, no, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. You just touched the nerve. You just touched the nerve. You can't, and I love you, son, I love you, but you can't say he graduated unless it's either high school or college. Well, Nowadays, I, you know, I we start with way, the graduation but... programs in middle school and preschool. Oh, that was a big graduation. Uh, I know it. You one of them dudes down there with a big old uh, camcorder yeah. and the grandmom and the granddaddy when the kid yeah. graduates from preschool. Yeah, I was Come lucky on. enough to catch that plane ticket, you know. That but it... he graduated from middle school. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. good. You, you showed him some support, yeah. and that's what's important. And uh, that's one thing I wanted to do is uh, it, it was a major event for him. Well, that's good. Him I'm, I'm happy for him. He's, he's out there with his moms. I, yes, uh, the sheriff got him out there. <laughs> Basically, that's like how Neil Bortz puts it. He's out there by the point of a gun. No, no. He, well, y'all divorced. Yes. That's what it is. The sheriff's got him out there. If the you go get him, him the sheriff's going to stop you from getting well, I'd like to, uh I'd like to get him here. He's basically at an age where I'd like to, like you say, bring him into the hood. What kind of, what kind of, uh, what part of Cali is he in? He's in uh, San Diego. Oh, San Diego. That's yeah. pretty nice down there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not as bad, uh -huh. but still San Diego's uh -huh. changed quite a bit since, the, um, since I was there. I was you know, there. my biggest problem, I think, uh, if I accept these thousands and thousands of job offers that have been coming my way to go to California, my biggest problem would be adjusting to the Hispanic uh, community, because yeah. I respect their, their 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 customs and their culture, and I respect them. But personally, I don't want nothing to do with them. 
Well, you know what I mean, that, nothing. That I'm not being changes that's happening out there right. anyway. I'm, saying, I'm not being negative towards them. I respect them, and I'm willing to let them do what they want to do, just like I respect white folks and let them do what they want to do, and Koreans and everybody else. But you know, being around a whole lot of Spanish people, man, that kind of put me on edge. It's the second culture, basically, in all of those that I have a problem dealing with. I don't have a problem dealing with the middle class Spanish mm -hmm. culture, middle class white culture, middle class Asian culture, but it's the underclass culture. Right. That and see, there's a, a lot of problems. there's a phenomenon taking place in America that a lot of people are not aware of. And that phenomenon is called the browning of America. You see, by the year 2010, most sociologists have predicted that the majority minority, the majority minority, in other words, the biggest minority in this country, will be brown. And blacks will not be the minority of choice. You know, and I got a big problem because as the minority of choice, we have not achieved sufficiently to be on our own as a minority in terms of, you know, not standing in line for some kind of handout. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, we're not going to make it without some kind of set aside or some kind of something around here, some kind of equal protection under the law. But the browning of America is a phenomenon that a lot of people aren't aware of, and it's going to take place, and it's happening like in Cali, it's happening in Texas, and it's happening in New York City and Philly and other places. And I'm just, you know, I'm just as happy to be here in Atlanta, you know, going up and down Simpson Road and <laughs> Campbellton Road and, and for the rest of my life, I'd be just as happy. That's an interesting part about Atlanta is to come right. back and see all the brothers and sisters running around as opposed to um, Southern California. Right, because you are brown not... Brown and white. <laughs> I, I keep telling my kids all the time, you are not going to find, and we talk about the problem... De man, you see, I was born in Toledo, so don't talk about Detroit, Ralph. Now, I don't like Detroit. <laughs> I don't like Detroit. Detroit ain't nothing. It, it ain't that bad. I didn't even name Detroit mean? Detroit. That's the name. It's Detroit. Well, Detroit had its day, is what I'm, you know what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, 59 through 69, y'all was smoking. Well, see, see, they're going to say the same thing about Atlanta. Oh, they're going to no. say, oh, say 93 no. to 96, y'all was smoking. No, no. After the no, sir. Town. no, no. <laughs> we, hey, one thing about it. When Detroit was smoking, I wasn't trying to move up there. But as soon as Atlanta started smoking, y'all come down here. Oh, yeah. Ah. You, know, you, got, you got to go where the party is. Yeah, right. Well, y'all need to do some work after the party over. That's yeah, the well, deal. That's, that's going to be the problem. What's happening in 1997 is the issue. Okay. And uh, there's a lot of changes going on right now. Right. They're building up, getting ready to go. Correct. But it depends on how they handle it after 1997. When they take up the suitcases and they pick up the money and walk out of town. That's right. That's when the... Uh, that's when you got to really keep your eye out on what's happening with Atlanta. You know, and not only that, in 1993, when they're building all of this stuff, in 1994, when they're getting it ready and they're preparing it, in 1995, when they go to hiring the folks that are going to actually be running these different venues, that's when you got to keep your eye on it because that's when the money starts leaving. Their money just don't go when they, they put out that flame. Right. You know, the money goes when they get ready to build a rafter for the flame. And, hey, I got my eye out, man. I got my eye out. This Ukog, Muggog, Gugog, and all this other gog they got, man. Well, I, I'm example, checking on them. What happens after the Olympics, you know, what happens in the black community after the Olympics? I know we wouldn't hear anything about, you know, uh, the urban community in, in L.A. during the Olympics. So sure didn't. But sure uh, didn't, in didn't. the after, now all of a sudden they're in hard times. So Good it's, point. it's something to keep your eye on. You sound like a sociologist there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here I talk about the browning of America, and you're talking about the burning of Atlanta after yeah, the Olympics. After the Olympics. And then we're not talking about a riot. We're talking about the economic burning of Atlanta, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's I, make that perfectly clear because I cannot stand any more scandalous press. <laughs> Hey, thank you for checking in, uh, Mac. Just checking in. Right? All right, and, and congratulations on your son out thank there in you, Cali, thank man. Thank you very much. Serious business, because he could, he could really go... You know, he could go either way right now. You know that. Uh, that's one he reason could why go I'm sticking my way. nose in every little bitty thing I can. Yes, just sir. Just so know I'm there. There if you he go. needs me, say something. You know, you I'm go. only a phone call away. You know what? you got to put one paycheck up, too. I know you're putting your money up. Yeah. But you got to have at least one paycheck up because if he does call you and you can't go because of a paycheck, oh, that's no. going to make you look bad. There's no reason that I can't go. I'll get there by hook or by crook. There you go. No, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I like that expression, hook or by crook. But everything we say now is translated literally. They're going to say that I said that if your son calls and you don't have the money, go rob a 7-Eleven. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? But by hook or by crook, my friend, that's the big, by any means necessary. By any means necessary. There we go. By hey, any means necessary. good call, Mac. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. All right, bye-bye. All right, let's get up out of here. Let my main man, Gene Michaels, come in here. Come on, Shay. Let's get out of here. If you miss a day, you miss a lot. News Radio 640, WGST, Atlanta's most dependable news, traffic, and weather station. 
evening. We have cloudy skies in 75 degrees. I'm Gene Michaels. News Radio 640 WGST. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, a chance of afternoon showers and a high around 91 degrees. Atlanta's official three-day weather forecast is coming up. Here's what's happening now at 8.30. Congressional investigators say they have found no evidence to support claims that President Bush was involved in the October surprise back in 1980. The House has voted to eliminate the $86,000 budget for Vice President Dan Quayle's Council on Competitiveness. A man being held for killing two attorneys today at Fort Worth, Texas, in a courthouse has told a Dallas TV station he was trying to draw attention to a divorce case that he says was he was angry about in criminal charge. The officials say the union... Stay black. Why should I bleach my skin where I can go fishing? And I ain't got to serve the beer. I ain't got to serve the hot dog. Some of these folks can pander to me instead of me having to go down there and jigaboo and jigaboo. Cook, cook catfish and stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> every 4th of July. I can't okay. enjoy being with my family. Ah, 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 ah. Now, first of all, let me get my mind right. Let me get my mind right. <laughs> What does Michael Jackson bleaching his skin have to do with you being a jigaboo? Well, I think when they, you know, they always tell you, you can mm -hmm. talk like you want to talk. Right. Fish talk how you the like. Biggest, my wife always told me, remember one thing. What's that? They steal white folks. Well, so, I, so but, you know, I mean, I can that? go fishing. Okay. And, and, and I... I even catch the biggest fish and throw it back on purpose because I'm afraid they're not going to let me ride back into the bank with them. No, no, no. Let, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I'll be honest with you, and I ain't tarming on you, and I ain't chumping out on you, home. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I always say live large. Okay. In order for you to live large, you have to expand your comfort zone. Okay. You appear not to be comfortable around white people. But they won't accept me. Every time I turn around, they want me to cook, won't clean up. Wash dish. I mean, do I have to get a radio show? I'm tired of cooking catfish here <laughs> Fourth of July for a bunch of white folks. That's why well, they get together. Well, see, you gotta expand not only your comfort zone. You gotta expand your circle of acquaintances. You gotta expand your horizons. You gotta think beyond cooking the catfish. You know, I worked for a man as a construction worker, and he invited me up to his house to cook because I cook. Listen to me, though. Okay. Listen to me, though. Listen to me. Just check check this out. Okay. He invited me up to his house. He's big time contractor. I'm, I'm not ashamed to call his name. Okay. John D. Stevens in Stone Mountain. Okay. White man got copper gutters. That tells you what kind of money he got. Yeah. Okay. Copper gutters running around the house. He got a horse barn. He got a two story horse barn in the backyard. Okay. Now most folks I know don't even live in a two story house. He got a two story <laughs> horse barn. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now I cooked 17 Fred Flintstone T-bone steaks. <laughs> That's them big old brontosaurus type steaks yeah. and some ribs. Okay. White man looked at me and I was up there serving the food and everything. Funniest thing happened. Maid, they got a black maid too. They had a black cook. But the black maid fell down the steps bringing some of the ribs. He said, Ralph, throw these away. She fell down the steps with them. And I looked at the man. The man's flow was like copy. Yeah. Man, I was, ran some water on them ribs and put some sauce on them, served them to the white folks. But anyway, anyway, the white man looked at me. So he said, Ralph, look at me, boy. He called me a boy. See what I mean? But listen to me. Listen to me. He said, Ralph, look at me, boy. And I, and I said, Lord, this is it. Because I knew I was going to get two, $300, but I said, is it worth looking him in his eye and him calling me a boy and hearing what he got to say? But he said, look at me, boy. And I looked up, and I mean, I, I, and I said, I heard, I heard the, the music from Roots playing, but I looked up, you know, <laughs> and, and I looked at him. He said, I just want to tell you one damn thing. And everybody, a hush fell over the place. He said, these the best damn ribs I ever <laughs> ate. <laughs> now, hey, but check this out. Check this out. When I got back to work... When I got back to work that Monday, and this was right around this time of year, too, around the 4th of July. When I got back to work that Monday, they, and this is this is one reason why I'm against affirmative action, they figured out a way for me to be their minority. Oh, man. They say, sit down right here, Ralph. We're going to show you something. You're real good with concrete. We're going to give you these structures here. And they pointed to some structures on the map and all of this. And we want you to set up a company, and we want you to do this, and we're going to give you the lumber, this, that, and the other. Can you do it? All right, but let me ask you something. Yeah. Now, that come right. from cooking oh, catfish oh, okay. and Fred Flintstone steaks. Okay, now let me ask and you And letting something. them call me a boy. All right, let me ask you something. All right. Now, on a straight-up tip. And this was a cook up plan cracker. Okay, All right. okay. All right, on a straight-up tip. Straight up. Okay, here we are live. Here you got are. the power. Right. Now, if it was an acceptable thing okay. that you didn't have to hire black folks to do nothing other than what you want them to do. Right. All right, right. and I don't care how much saying, how much y'all protest, 
Do you think we'd be you think we'd be talk show hosts? Do you think we'd be anything other than catfish cookers and real bakers and everything? That's the only reason why I am for affirmative action. I say, okay, fine. Yeah, but Y'all we... white folks own it, but the only reason why you do own it is because our forefathers, our forefathers is what made you rich. Yeah, true, you rich, but, but let me if you, you trace that white money back, yeah. it's ours anyway. <laughs> Give us the job. But let me tell you this about white folks, and I have figured this out. White folks don't care what you believe in. I know that. They don't care who you for, long as you for them and long as you can make them some money. I would not be here if my ratings were not up, if our advertisers were not flocking to the station to sell money to the people that are listening. I draw a big crowd. But what about the opportunity initially? And you walk in the door and said, no, no, we're not, even, we're not, we're not hiring. The you opportunity was calculated. And let me say this. Let me tell you how it was calculated. We bought this spot on the dial from a black man. Okay. He had WPBD. His tower is on Simpson Road. Ain't a white man within 100 miles of Simpson Road, okay? <laughs> so at night when the power goes down, they know that the, the, the broadcast beam was going to be emanating from the heart of the black community. A smart move in order to make money would be to get a black man. That only made sense. Okay. So that's how they do. And it ain't because I'm a tongue, because I get white folks more hell than anybody. But do you see who come out against me? Yeah. The homosexuals and other minority communities come out against me. White folks love me. But I can't understand. Last night, I counted the number of white folks called. I had at least 2,000 white yep. people call yep. me last You're night. You're right. Now, I, I tell you what, within the last month or so, they, I mean, your show is getting about like a lot of these black colleges. See, a lot of these people don't know now. A lot of these black colleges, in order to get that federal money, they got to do what? They got to have so many minorities. They got white some minorities coming into these schools now. But, home, I'm like Arsenio. It's a matter of entertainment. You got a, you got a knob. You know, I'm not comparing myself yeah. to that big booty yeah. sucker, that yeah. long finger sucker, but you got a knob <laughs> on your TV. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to watch Johnny or Jay Leno, you can flip. Okay. If you want to watch Arsenio, I'm going to have Eddie Murphy. You're going to be like my Eddie Murphy, you well, know. Well, I'm going to have the real deal. He going to have who he going to have. Now, if you want me, Jay Leno is what you're yeah. talking about. Okay. Jay Leno went and got a black man. Okay. He went and got Marcellus, his brother. Okay. And then they got this little biracial thing going over there. And they're doing a good job. But, man, my show, by and large, is judged on the merit of its entertainment value and how hot and heavy I get in my personality. Okay. It ain't a black thing. It ain't okay. about that. Okay. W-A-O-K -okay been black long as I've been black. Okay. You see what kind of numbers Joe Walker got. Okay. You know, Mr. Mike Roberts over there with his no rap playing self at V. <laughs> I'm knocking them out the park okay. at night. You okay. see what I'm saying? So it ain't a matter of who black it was. Just, they got a Negro. They, they, they just they token. No, home. If I wasn't smoking, it wouldn't be no token. Okay, well, let me ask you one more thing, and I'm going to get my tickets and get on out of here. I might not give you these tickets oh, now. You're going to get me to argue. <laughs> well, here's now. You, all right. And I like to talk to people at least two or three minutes. And you done dissed Aberdeen. I got to get to him. He a good caller. Daryl, one of my greatest callers. And Mike. But well, come on, hurry up, okay, man. Okay, this is like you Ross Perot. Beg, you love begging North Carolina. <laughs> All right, let me ask you something. Only thing y'all got over there is a law school. Oh, no, don't do that. You know our accounting is smoking. Everything's accounting? Being accredited. You know good That's way. Y'all didn't have term. an accounting right, department. Y'all you know did about not? being accredited? That's a white man term. See how they got the black card. We accredited. Them, we accredited. Man, Morehouse College is the first black college to ever have a Phi Beta Kappa chapter. Oh, what man, you man we ain't talking about a fraternity. You walk in I ain't talking about no fraternity. Okay, That's right. what you... I'm, that's an okay. academic thing. Okay. Five beta cap. But that's Magno. That's them suckers who be who 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 like uh, uh Jesse Spice and Michael Lomax. They got okay. five beta cap. Well, I thing. want you to do the last contribution for all of us. It's like Ralph Perot. Right. You had everything. All right. Tell me. I want the solution. Yeah. What recommendations do you have for all black folks all over the world? What can we possibly do to get out of these white folks' kitchens? <laughs> What's the solution? I, I'm going to say this. <laughs> if you want to eat, stay in the kitchen. Oh, man. <laughs> no, oh, no, 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 that, no. That, that's weak. That's weak. Yeah, you got to tell uh, What uh, can uh, we uh, do uh, to get out of all these? I mean, no more catfish cooking, no more chitlin cleaning. We want to get out of the kitchen altogether. Anything, we want to own our own kitchen. You know how many blacks that's don't it. even own home. That's my part. That's my point. If you got a kitchen, go to your kitchen. That's right. You know, but there's a lot of little chilling I know out there that would never have had a Christmas 
had their mama not cut a piece of the white folk cake and brought it home after they had Christmas. Black folk Christmas used to start like a day after the white folk Christmas <laughs> when the mama would bring it from the yeah, white folk yeah, kitchen. Yeah. And if you look back in slavery days, yeah. if it weren't for them big old fat Oprah Winfrey looking <laughs> sisters in the kitchen taking care of the white man, a lot of y'all Negroes in the field would have starved. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So one hand wash the other, brother. Yeah. I can say stay in the kitchen, but get off the fit, get off the uh the, the catfish and the chitlins and let's get on some uh filet mignon and thing, you know? Okay. And I'm gonna okay. put you on hold. Okay, man. Yeah, you, you All can, right. can, can you understand that? I can understand that. Good call, bro. Good All right, peace. Hold on, peace. Yeah, I like these kind of shows, man. You know, this is the kind of show that I'm here for. This guy is bringing in all kinds of things here. I just gave him four tickets to the United States Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville. I've got something for Aberdeen, Daryl, and Mike. I want to ask you to please hold during the 9 o'clock news break. Be careful and stay tuned to News Radio 640 WGST. Serious weather breaking in the situation. We're going to keep you updated. I'll be right back in a minute. Don't you go another further. Go where you like, kid. being played at your station. We will provide the following time for you to announce your station identification. News Radio 640 WGST. We'd also like to add that we've now reached the three and a half minute mark of the song. Radio stations may begin your fade here. For those that would like help, we will start your fade for you. Atlanta's first news is on News Radio 640 WGST. Use it for reports on traffic and weather together eight times an hour. News Radio 640 WGST, Atlanta's dependable news, traffic, and weather station. Good evening. We have cloudy skies and 75 degrees. I'm Gene Michaels. News Radio 640 WGST. Some severe thunderstorms in the metro Atlanta area this evening. Severe storms in Douglasville. And one of our listeners reporting they have a lot of hail going on there. And Conyers, it appears to be some severe thunderstorms there as well. All this is uh, south of the metro Atlanta area, and it's moving to the north, so we expect some heavy showers in the next hour or so, a severe thunderstorm warning is in effect for southern Fulton County until 9.15 this evening. Elsewhere in the news, the Fulton County Police Department's getting serious about driving under the influence. News Radio 640 WGST's Mindy Larkin reports on a new DUI task force. Six Fulton County officers will be patrolling the streets of unincorporated Fulton as the new DUI task force. Police Chief Lewis Graham says the unit will be fully activated for the upcoming 4th of July holiday weekend. Graham says the task force is being funded through the state. We have applied for and received a grant uh, that funds um, the uh, officers and equipment to deal strictly with drunk drivers. And of course that has been awarded and tonight, uh, effectively today, July 1st, we will begin our patrols. Graham says each car will be equipped with video cameras and the latest in radar. The chief says the officers will not be staking out bars and restaurants in the county. Instead, they'll try to catch drunk drivers on their way home. Andy Larkham, News Radio 640 WGST. A six-year-old autistic boy from Kennesaw discovered safe and sound after a search all night. It ended two days of searching by rescue professionals and volunteers. News Radio 640 WGST's Wade, M Wade Medlock reports that this morning's massive search uh, ended up with the boy being found and a bunch of kudzu. Buddy, pull. Yeah, everybody, pull. Pull, buddy. Pull, buddy. Volunteers shouted his name while others used dogs fanning out over a mile-long stretch of brambles, blackberries, and poison ivy between Barrett Parkway and Chastain Road along I-75. It poured rain throughout. But finally, word spread that two searchers, painter Jeff McIntyre of Marietta and naval airman Barrington Hoyland, found him. He kept listening, and it kept getting louder, and then he heard it, and then I, I just said, you know, forget it, I'm going up through there. And I hauled ass up through there and got up top, and, yeah, and, and he's still crying louder. Then we yeah, heard a lot of the closest yeah. you got. Then we heard him. Then he just pulled back. The, he said he pulled back some bushes, and there he was, standing up next to the gate.
The boy jumped into McIntyre's arms and was given a Cobb County Sheriff's ball cap as a memento of a near tragedy that had a happy ending. Wade Medlock, News Radio 640 WGST. President Bush welcomed Japan's Prime Minister to the White House today. Correspondent Mark Noller has the story. With an eye on their respective political situations at home, President Bush and Prime Minister Miyazawa portrayed their initial round of talks as a success. In brief remarks, Mr. Bush said some trade problems had been resolved, but not all. I feel we have more to do. Uh, and, Mr. Prime Minister, I want to mention our continued interest in access to your markets for automobiles and auto parts. As Mr. Bush spoke, Miyazawa nodded as if to say, I know, I know. The Prime Minister, who stands a foot shorter than Mr. Bush, began his remarks with a short joke. Well, thank you for giving me this lower podium. <laughs> the two leaders then left the White House for a brief visit to Camp David and to attend a Luciano Pavarotti concert later in the evening. Mark Noller, CBS News, the White House. News Radio 640, WGST time, four minutes past nine o'clock. The official three-day weather channel forecast from News Radio 640, WGST. There still will be a few isolated showers and thunderstorms around the area this evening. Overnight, partly to mostly cloudy skies, low temperature, 72 degrees. For Thursday, hot and humid, 91 the high, a mixture of clouds and sunshine, some isolated afternoon or evening showers and thunder showers. Partly cloudy overnight, Thursday night, 72. Friday and Saturday, just about the same thing. Partly cloudy skies, isolated afternoon and evening thunder showers through the period. 94 the high on Friday and for the 4th of July, a high of 92. With 24-hour a day coverage at the Weather Channel Cable Network, I'm Brent Bass for 640 WGST. Once again, a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for southern Fulton County until 9.15 this evening. We have heavy showers all over the metro Atlanta area. Cloudy skies and 75 at Atlanta's official weather station. News Radio 640 WGST. First for news and first on your AM dial. This is where you get Atlanta's first news. News Radio 640 WGST. Now, if this record is being played at a club, disco lounge, house basement, or block party, car stereo, stoop, or in any other social gathering, we will now allow the beat to continue and proceed to give you more of what you like. This message has been brought to you by the makers of The Way We Swing and the underground Talk How You Like Posse. Yeah. And I'm your brother Ralph from Ben Hill, the leader of the crew the Talk How You Like Underground Posse. Just made a call during the break out to uh, Ben Hill in the Douglasville area, checking two places. And it's raining, people, from Douglasville all the way around the Horn to Kanye's on the bottom. If you think of Atlanta as a clock, the metropolitan area as a clock, it's raining from like 4 to 8. So be careful, be advised, all right? Be careful, that's the main thing. Aberdeen Vinings, you're on News Radio 640 WGST. Salam alaikum, Abdul Rahu. How are you? Wa alaikum salam. Living law is my brother. Up here in the vestry to you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. I want to talk to you about three things. Sure. The first thing is, I haven't spoken with you in a while, so I haven't had a chance to talk about ICT. ICT. That's one, two, South Africa, and three, the election. So okay. Let me start with the election. What do you think of this? Why don't we just have three presidents? Bush for international affairs, Clayton for domestic, and Peru for economics. That makes sense. That makes <laughs> sense. That makes sense. I don't think we could have three presidents. <laughs> But we're gonna have like a like the University of Georgia's office. We can have like a three-pronged attack. That's probably what it's gonna take. Man. You know, I would like to see. And, and as much as I dislike Richard Nixon, as much as I dislike him as a person and as a president, he had a good team. He had Kissinger on the international level, you know, and we had some pretty sound economic policies. I guess with with the war and all, you know. But they had it pretty well together. And Carter had a good team also. But ideally, that's what we need: a Clinton with a good focus on. Domestic things, right, Bush right. on the international scale, people that they, they like and look up to, the tall, lanky American type guy, you know, the rich guy, yeah. you know, and then a parole sucker who can make some millions of exactly. things, man. Well, I got a better, I got a better scenario. Why don't we let Clinton, as the president, get some Japanese economic advisors and some Russian international advisors? <laughs> I think we'd be all right then. Yeah, listen, um, you've heard this song, I Shot the Sheriff. Yeah, I shot I, the sheriff. I didn't shoot the deputy. I did not. Every time I plant a seed, they say kill it before it grows. <laughs> anyway, you know that... Um, sheriff Brown has been beating me down. You know that Bob Marley sang that song? Yeah, Bob Marley. And also Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton, uh-huh. And um, you saw Terminator, didn't you? And I also saw Batman crashing about 20 police cars. Exactly, but nobody's making a big deal about all that. Well, Bush did. Bush did yesterday. Well, and, and that's, that's the point. That's the point. Yeah. I mean... 
Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. Um, in his movies, um, mm -hmm. there were several cops that were killed. Right. And um, even you know, in the movie The Untouchables, kind of glorified Al Capone blowing up and killing some police. Will you agree with me that um, Ice T's only um, exercising his, um, his rights as um, a citizen that lives in a capitalist society? No, I will not agree that he's only exercising his right. Uh, he is kind of pushing his right. Well, you know, I'm not... But he is busy. exercising it, but that's not the only thing that he's doing with this right of free speech. He's kind of pushing it. Well, I'm not advocating violence. Me anyway. either. But, um, you know, we have to, again, um, deal with everything on equal basis. And, right. Um, you know, nobody uh, said anything about um, Eric Carson's song or no. Mali's song. No, nobody said anything about the bomb, 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 Iraq songs that we were coming out with. Exactly. And we were passing out bombs so damn insane, and we killed over 100,000 civilians. The soldiers innocent, gave up. Innocent. We killed civilians in over there in Iraq. Exactly. Innocent people. That's right. And uh, the whole thing is about South Africa. Um, okay. Uh, what do you think, Russ? I want, I want a civil war in South Africa. We had our civil war. That's what it took for this nation to become great, and that's what it's going to take in South Africa. For And, and I look at it, and check this out now. I look at it, and I'm a, I'm a student of American history, and I'm going to compare South Africa with America right. in this it, particular it in this particular to. part of our history. During this during the uh, Civil War, they negotiated and they negotiated back and forth. Exactly. The Missouri Compromise, the Kansas Act, and all of this stuff. They had all kinds of things they were negotiating in the legislature, in the press. You had the abolitionists, then you had the, the uh, Dixiecrats and the Aris, you know, the, the, or the aristocratic dudes in the South, the planters, and all of that. They went back and forth, back and forth. They even sought help from foreign powers, France and Britain, and they went back and forth. But what it all boiled down to in 1860 something was a civil war, civil war. and, okay. and it, that's where it, it took bloodshed now yeah. how is it that if you know we we are great and we can examine our history and we see that it took bloodshed for us to become where we are it's going to take bloodshed for south africa yes it will i agree with you there but um, now listen to this you know that the people of south africa have um, spoken um a little while back um, when they voted to you know, go ahead and um, have a majority um, rule. Right. Okay? Now, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I think what's going on right now is the white government um, getting a cold feet. Yeah, they're reneging. I exactly. used to play a lot of bid whist. Exactly. And if your card is played and you've got a card in that suit, you yes. are supposed to play that card. But they're pretending that they're out of that suit and they want to play another card, and they're really holding the card and they're reneging. Exactly. And again, it boils down to power. And, um, is it power in land, and they're not going to give it up without a fight? No, 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 no. I mean, check this out. I mean, if, um, say, you know, blacks were in control in, in South Africa or even in this country, and, um, you know, I mean, I don't think blacks would just relinquish the power just like that. I, mean, I know the Indians didn't relinquish their power. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they took it away by force. Unfortunately, all the Indians had to fight back with was sticks and arrows and stones tied to sticks. Yes. And, but um, as far as South Africa is concerned, I pray. I pray for peace. I pray and I wish and I hope that everything can be equitable and we wake up tomorrow and the headlines would say, you know how we saw, it's Atlanta and everybody rejoiced. We see a big headline that would say, it's South Africa. Everything's all right. Mandela and all the other white folks over there hugging up with the black folks. I'd love to see that tomorrow morning. That's the point. You I know, would love to see it, but black it, people are not standing in the way of progress in South Africa. It's the white folks. Exactly. And um, that's what it's not been reported in the United States. And see, the white folks then started lying. They were already lying when they didn't want the press to come in. And they, they stopped the press. They barred all the press from coming in to South Africa to cover the events. Now they're lying, saying that the violence was caused by the blacks. No. They even had an article in the Times. I was looking at the Times today. They're uh, showing the, the, the are necklace. You, are you talking about the New York Times? Yeah, the New York Times, okay, where, they showed, the where they show the necklace and everything, you know, with the little kids wrapped in a tire. Right. And that's the image you get of South Africa, ghettos and people living in tin shacks with open sewers running down the street. Then I say to myself, how in the hell do we get Mandela? Mandela has been a lawyer for over, what, 40-something years. Yes. You yes. have educated, smart, clear-thinking black people in South Africa, but the media would have you think that these smooth white folks are going to try to turn this thing over to these savage Negroes when the power structure is already in place in South Africa. Exactly. In terms of black and white. They're reneging, man, and unfortunately it's, it's not going to be the ballot. It's going to be the bullet in South Africa. Well, I, I hate to agree with you, but I do. Um, um, you promised me a, a gift, 
I'm yes, not sir. begging. You're not begging. I did <laughs> promise you a gift. I promise you, my brother, that I will shake your hand. That is a gift, man. That's a blessing from Allah. You will touch the living, breathing hand of his saint. Okay, that's right. You can, you can give it to somebody else, but um, the brother that called... <laughs> oh, you don't want it. Oh, let's go. <laughs> hey, I got to go, baby brother. The brother that called earlier. Yes, sir. Um, you know, the, the, the answer to his problem is he needs to get out and um, start his own business. I mean... Yeah, right. If you want to get out of the white folk kitchen, just learn how to strike a match on a little fire somewhere. Exactly. He can start barbecuing some of them sold nachos. You ever had any sold nachos? No, I haven't. That's chitlins on top of some fritos with some coleslaw. That's sold nachos. Daryl, Latonia, you're on News Radio 640. How you doing, Ralph? WGST. Doing all right. Good. Good. Uh, I, I first called you about the uh, city of Atlanta, but my son trying to... Uh, been trying to talk me into talking about that Mo House Mars Brown game. Oh. I, I see uh, Mo House decided to play a real school again. We stopped playing Mars Brown, man. No, Mars Brown stopped playing Mo House. No, because there wasn't no challenge on the field. We got tired of stepping over all of them chickens and alligators y'all country bumpkins was bringing to Atlanta, calling y'all selves going to college. But, we but, got tired of fussing and fighting Ram, Ram. with y'all little backwood third grade dropouts over Ram, at Mars Ram, Brown. Ram, Ram, wait a minute, man. Wait a minute. And that little giant band y'all got, but, please. Ram, Ram, tell me this. Yeah. What happened when the when the game in and after all the dust was scared, settled? What was the score on the scoreboard? Look, man, y'all know y'all cheated. Y'all specialize in cheating. <laughs> y'all spe experts at it. And number two, for years, y'all had that stadium over there, and uh, y'all have tortured us every time we come to that little giant stadium. For, for, for Ram, That's why we built our own. For Ram, we played y'all in y'all own stadium, we beat y'all there, too. Y'all did. We sure did. I must have been asleep that day. Hey, hey, Ralph, you, <laughs> no, you wasn't asleep. You had too much to drink. No, I don't drink. I don't drink. Well, I, I do. I do sip. I like Mars Brown. Mars Brown's all right. I like hey, Mars hey, Brown. And, and you talk about... you. It's you, Clark I don't like. But you talk, You also talk about you played in the band over Two there. years strong. What band? The Marching 100. What band? The Maroon Tiger Marching Band. You talking about that Marching 20 y'all got over there? You know good and well we had the hottest band in town. At least y'all could hear us. But, but Raph, you talking about that Marching 20 music. you got over there? Morehouse band members can read music. We have like Dizzy Gillespie, Ma Davis. Y'all have them little bit of, little, little, little bit of Washington High dudes in hey, y'all band. Tell Raph. me y'all don't have Washington High students in Morehouse Brown band. Raph, Raph. Tell me you don't have. Tell me y'all don't have Douglas High students over there in Morehouse. <laughs> 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 y'all got all of, all of Washington hey, High hey, band hey, in Morehouse Brown. Raph, Raph, yeah. tell me this. Yeah. Tell, tell me this. Yeah. Uh, uh. Y'all read music out on the field, but see, we learn music over in the band room, then we play it out on the field. Yeah, see, right. that's a big difference. Yeah, especially when you forget what you learned <laughs> in the middle of stepping and sweating hey, and running hey, around, but, but rolling Ram. and hunching on the ground and doing all them vulgar movements y'all hey, hey, been doing out there. Ram. I'm ashamed of your band. Hey, Ram. Yeah. As long as it sound like music sound good, doesn't it? Mars Brown's got a good band. But see, y'all got a big head when the white folks invited y'all up to the Macy's Day Parade. Uh-huh. And y'all got the big head when y'all went to New York for the big Thanksgiving and Turkey Day and Christmas Parade. What about California? Y'all went out there, too? Yeah. Oh, the Rose Bowl. That's right. Y'all uh -huh. went out there one time for a few what? minutes. No, we went out there a couple of times. Yeah, but now, hey, what those about... y'all living in the past. No, but... Them we... days are gone. Hey, we on the way back to Macy's this year. Y'all going back to Macy's? Just to show Grisha's grocery. I didn't know they were going to have a parade at the Avondale Mall. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're, hey, Ralph. What? They're having, a, they're having a parade to close it down. <laughs> no, they're going to keep it open. I like Mars Brown. Mars Brown's all right. I took a lot of courses over there, and uh, once upon a time, I, I met a nice little girl from Mars Brown. Hey, it's hey. Clark I don't like. I, I hate Clark High. But, I mean, they say I hate. The only thing I really hate is Clark High. But see, my, my I son hate called. CC. My son told and you, me you do too, say it. But you do too, say it. See, I don't say call, it. I don't call Clark High. I call it Clark Elementary. There you go. All right. <laughs> see, 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 I, I hate Clark. that CC pie. There you go. There you go. I know you good but old Mars see, Brown dudes hate me, Clark. Call, told me to call since, mm. you know, I'm a first-time caller for yeah. you. Okay. So although there are 10,000 Darrells out here in Latonia. Yeah. Uh, I'm I, the thought first. You, I thought you were my main man, Darrell. No, nah, I'm not the main man. I listen to you all the time. Well, I appreciate but it. But I, I called. This is my first time calling. Well, let me son. ask you this, Darrell. Yeah. You're 37, right? Yeah. How much more longer to be before you finish Mars Brown? <laughs> hey, Ralph, I finished more house when I was 16. <laughs> oh, that's cool. You know what, though, man? I can, this is the best example I can give you of more house and Mars Brown, okay? Uh-huh. When you think of Mars Brown, you think of Eddie Anderson. 
Uh -huh. That's Rochester. Yeah. When you think of Mohawk, you think of Duke Ellington. You know what I'm saying? Peace, my brother. Baseball, football, basketball. Curly? Not. This is Matt Stewart, and we'll talk about just about anything. Sports Tonight, 10 to 11, weeknights on News Radio 640, WGST. This is Neil Bortz. For years, literally for years, I went to all the home shows. I looked at the spas. I always wanted one. I was just never quite satisfied with the dealers or the price or what have you. But then I'd go out and run in the evening. I'd come home and I'd have no hot tub to jump in. Well, I finally did it. I finally went to Recreational Factory Warehouse and bought the spa. And there's a number of reasons why I chose them. They are a factory direct outlet. They make the spas. They have a hundred different combinations of spas to choose from. They've got a knowledgeable sales force. They don't hit you with a bunch of extras. They don't hit you with high pressure sales techniques. And I'm firmly convinced it's the best spa value on the market. By the way, Recreational Factory Warehouse, also the number one pool seller in the United States. Three locations, Norcross, Jimmy Carter Access Road off 85, Marietta, a mile from exit 114 off 75, and Terra Boulevard in Jonesboro. Get your spa from Recreational Factory Warehouse. Three traffic helicopters and Atlanta's exclusive network of car phone reporters. Four times the coverage of any other radio station. Right here on News Radio 640 WGST. Now it's time for a breakdown. Never gonna get it, never gonna get it. Never gonna get it, never gonna get it. Never gonna get it, never gonna get it. Never gonna get it. Never gonna get it, 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 never gonna get it. 233-WGST-1800-FON-WGST. Let's go to Marietta and talk to Mike. You're on News Radio 640 WGST. Ralph. Yes, sir. How you living? Living large, Doctor. Uh, I know you got me sized up already. You no, know I don't. Then look at the tag. It's Mike Marietta. No, I don't. That's how you do it, Ralph. No, I didn't size you up. All I, right. I All just right. jumped right to you because you've been on hold. I've been, I've been going along with my callers tonight. I just, you know, enjoy letting things yeah. flow, man. Yeah. I don't like scripted shows. I like everything kind of like this, just flow and, you know, and never take, never can tell what you and I are gonna get into, right? Yeah. Well, I hope, I, I hope I don't get too far with you because. That's your program. That's your long suit there. That's what you're good at. Well, thank you, man. But anyway, uh, listened to you for a little bit, never called. And uh, but uh, and, I, and I always said myself, I said, if I ever call Ralph, I want to talk to him about something other than black-white. Okay. But I couldn't do it. Oh, uh, you mean we're going, to talk, we're going to talk black and white? That's your long suit, isn't it? No, my long suit is humor. Yeah, okay. And then uh, my second suit is Atlanta, and Atlanta happens to be black and white. Yeah. Everything. So Everything. what it was was driving home a bit ago listening to the old, uh, what was it, the, uh, oh, yeah, Boston. You ever go to them Boston games and look at all the white folks wearing green you say, Ralph? Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. But, uh, that's you know. That's true, and it's embarrassing, and it hurts me. Well, I'm telling you this. I've been to a lot of games. I've been to Boston wearing green. I've been to Cleveland Cadavers. And I've been to <laughs> New Jersey. Cleveland Cadavers. I've been to all of them, Ralph, okay. and I look around, and most of what I see is the white faces, you know? That's what I say. You're right. I mean, it didn't, but. Oh, but talking about all the games. I have to beg the difference with you on the uh, okay. on the plan about hey they only go to the Boston and they only go to bring the Mountain Man in from. What Utah. I said was the sellouts, and you know that's a fact. If you go to the Cleveland Cadaver game, you got a lot of empty seats, but it's still a lot of white people. But at the same time, the sellouts are the Utahs and the uh, Lakers and the Boston game. Well, but bulk, you know, that's the, really I mean as much as you talk about who slings the hot dogs and makes the beer and all that stuff. But the bulk of the, the support that keeps the team going is the white folks in the I, stands, right? I agree with you Same 100%. Same thing down in Fulton County, you know? I agree with you and it 100%. Doesn't matter if they, that doesn't matter if they feel five black guys on the court down there or oh, no. or, or four out of uh, oh, nine on the stadium. Oh, no. oh it does matter. Now, that, now that, that matters. No, I mean, it does. what I'm saying, it doesn't matter that they happen to feel five black guys on okay. the court at no. the Omni. Okay. But you still look in the stands and who's the most faces you see. White folks. Right. But here's my contention. Now, right. I agree with you on that. But they still will go through changes to make sure that they got a white boy out there. Well, I guess that's the new contention with this guy, huh? No. It started a couple of years ago, and we signed that deal that Detroit offered contact $3 million I, and all of that. I, hey, I'll That's where it started. I, I'll never argue with you on the no contact, big contact, get see, out of town, John contact. See, it goes deeper than just the Hawks, and I'm from Atlanta, and we're close to the same age. I got you by a couple of two or three years. Well, I just rounded it off in the... Okay. But once upon a time, they have always had... Now, you have to remember, this is the deep south. And the Deep South has to take time to get used to certain things. 
If you were to come to a lot of these people in the Deep South, say 30 years ago, and say, we're going to put an all-black team on the field, and we're going to win, and we're going to have a winner here, they say no. Because the evidence is clear. When the Pittsburgh Pirates had that We Are Family team, you remember that team? They were, we Are Family. Bill Curtin? Willie Starr. No, I'm talking about the baseball team. Okay. Well, they stay same thing with football. They had those five brothers, those steel curtain, all black and all of that. But the point is, we have, have, to, we have had, we have had, woo, yeah. we have, have had to have had, I don't know how to say it that like that. Too. In the past, we had to have a white boy on the field, whether it was Eddie Matthews, whether it was Pistol Pete Maravich. We had to have a white boy, whether it was Dale Murphy. We had to have a white boy, and the teams suffered because we were trying to placate racial attitudes. But once we decided we wanted the best team, no matter what color the person was, which is we the way got, it should be. Which is, which is the way it should be. And that's be. the way I'll go, no matter what and, color and, and that's, the field. And that's what we got that's now with the Braves. The there that's you the, go. There you go. Yeah. And that's when we get set out. You know, that's the way it turns out to be more today than not, so, especially when you talking basketball. So when, when we talk about things like this, we see that racial discrimination costs money. We lost money because we wanted Pistol Pete out there. Okay, so now We you... lost money because we wanted Dale Murphy eating ice cream and striking out. We lost money because we wanted Eddie Matthews getting drunk every night uh, as opposed to putting a winner out there and getting the National League champions in this town like we did and a World Series and all of this, man. That happened when Stan Caston and Ted Turner and Sure Holtz and all those other brothers got together, people got together over there and said, hey, we want a winner. Don't, don't make no difference what color it is. We'll take the racial flack from the pickup uh, truck drivers as uh, long as we get a winner. And I, you see, I couldn't argue with you on it, but I, I bet there's somebody out there that knows a little more history about the Dale Murphy eating ice cream stuff. Cause, uh, well, you know, he you was know, a he loser. Put, he put some numbers on the board. No. Sure, he got no. washed out after a while. He but was, he he was, was washed out. Dale Murphy was washed out a long time ago, and the difference between Dale Murphy and David Justice is when David Justice gets in a slump, everybody brings up this stuff about his, his attitude, they bring, they start throwing peanuts at him, and they start talking about he's an uppity Negro, when in actuality, Dale Murphy, uh, not Dale Murphy, but David Justice has been hurt. But when Dale Murphy can't play and ain't got no potential, well, he always they, smiled. they he said always he smiled. was in a slump, he always and he smiled. wasn't even hurt. He Dale always, Murphy was healthy all of that time. Yeah, he always smiled. But the point, the point is, though, we lost, man, because we did not think beyond racism. We didn't think winners, and you see. You and I have come together, not just on, on a couple of ideas. We've come together with this team. Well, I hope The so. Braves have brought Atlanta together, man. I the Braves so. have done more for the city of Atlanta than the police department, the Fulton County Commission, city council. It's the Braves Absolutely. that brings people together. I was going to say, I went to that parade last year. Me too. And that was a good feeling. And it, I mean, that's I, right. You know, I hadn't high-fived a bunch of anybody the, the, there you go. a long time did like you worry I did about, last year. I didn't worry about who I high-fived. That was a good feeling for everybody. Very good feeling. I had my kids with me, and it was just unfortunate but, but that I a few of my my knuckleheaded brothers had to spoil it towards the end. But I hate that everything, you know, I hate you know, it's the Ralph from Race Hill show. No, it ain't home. It is. It's when people it's, call up and, and do that. I, I ain't going to bite my tongue. You see, you have to realize no, this, no. too. No, no, I listen to you enough to know that but the I'm main breaking... thrust is the Ralph from Race Hill show. No, see, it y'all is. white folks are not used to a black man speaking up and talking like he likes. So when I do that and then I jump in on white issues and black issues, y'all get mad. See, I purposely, and I'll be honest with you, I purposely try to stay away from racial issues. I get counsel all the time about, Ralph, try not to be a talk show host that's black. Just be a talk show host that happens to be black. Don't be the anti neo right. You know, and I try. But every day I come in here, the building is smoky. I have to let the windows up. So when I let the windows up, from all of the race talk all day long from Rush and Neil and everybody else, when I let the windows up, I get the tag as being the racist. Well, Rush don't talk a whole lot. I mean, percentage-wise, he don't talk near the race talk that you do, right? But he talks percentage-wise. He don't have to. You know, I have to. Yeah. I have to, man. But I like what you say, you if know. If I can move beyond this, I would, you know. Yeah. But I can't. Every well, time I, I get I, my I really out of it. I really, I really don't think you will. And I'll probably will. still listen to you off and on because it's humorous on something. both sides. Let me tell you something, Holmes. But, but you, I, I'm going to make you proud of me. One day you're going to say, well, I remember when Ralph first started, all of his callers wanted him to be the black messiah, and they wouldn't let his character develop it. He, all he talked about was race. But Ralph hung on in there, and now Ralph's doing this, and I remember Ralph so-and-so, and you'll call me, and we'll have a conversation like that, and I'm going to say, hey, man, remember when I was tagged racist? And you're going to say, yeah, and I'm going to boom, I'm going to come out of my funk, man. See, I'm in a cocoon, man. I haven't even gone yeah. through the larvae stage or the pulpa stage. So my you, wings are still developing, you, friend. You, would, you wouldn't endorse a, a, a brother of yours, uh, Haskell Ward. Haskell well, Ward. Former assistant mayor of New York. Back, Haskell Ward. Uh, do I know Haskell Ward? I, former assistant mayor of New York. I saw him one time on a talk show interview mm -hmm. show back in the 80s, maybe before Koch was uh, mayor, whoever was before that. 
but they were they were probing him. They were trying to get him to 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 make a uh, an interview that was black and white on both sides. And he kept coming back to the girl interviewing and say, "Look, take a look at the country. First, we're Americans." Secondly, we just happen to be black. Mm. See, well, see we, I don't agree with that. I know you wouldn't. I because, knew you wouldn't. Uh, in order to be, that's like saying we're all diners. In order for us to be diners, in order for me to be dining, you're sitting at the table, you got food on your plate. If I'm at the table and ain't nothing on my plate, then I'm not dining. You know, and a lot of black people have been talking about uh, they're Americans, but we haven't been the beneficiaries of all of this Americanism. You know, we've been the, the victims of Americanism. And so in order to call us Americans, we're really victims of America. That's my point, and that's how the Braves got the National League Championship. That's how Atlanta got the city's image of being the city too busy to hate and all that other good stuff. Good call, Moreland. Thank you very much, Doctor. Curtis, you're on News Radio 640 WGST. Hey, Ralph. Hey. How you doing? Living large, Kurt. Man, let me tell you, I was on my way in here uh, home about 15, 20 minutes ago, and I heard you and the guy talk from AT, uh, North Carolina A&T. Yeah. Man, you had me. You almost had a wreck listening to you guys. <laughs> uh, That's uh, block talk, man. <laughs> I used to love to talk like that when I was in school. We stay up all night long smoking them camel cigarettes and drinking that belly hot wine, talking like that all night long. So you washed out the ribs, huh? Yeah, I did. <laughs> you know, when I was working with the white man up there, he said, Ralph, go ahead and throw away his hair away the maid. Drop. She, he was going to fire her. I said, wait a minute, man. He, she was about to cry. And she was coming down some steps, man. She was carrying like 400 pounds of rib. Uh -huh. He had her working overtime. She had cleaned the whole house all day long. And she could barely see, let alone walk. And she dropped the slab of the ribs. I picked them up. I said, yeah, so you don't mind if I take these home to my teller, do you? He said, no. Man, I skied some hot water on the rib and gave him the first bone off the slab. <laughs> And he looked at me and said, you know what, boy, it's the best damn barbecue I ever ate in my life. I said, yes, yeah, sir. You ain't said nothing about that glass I ground up in your iced tea. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Ralph. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll go okay. to you. I'll tell what do you do during the daytime? Sleep. <laughs> I got fired from my day job, man. No, no, I'm not sleep. I work with sponsors. And I work with my kids. As a matter of fact, I'm tired as a dog now, and I'm still not through. I won't be through until about 11.30 tonight. I got to do a promo when I leave here. Uh, during the day, if I'm not on the air, I'm mm -hmm. making personal appearances at the Braves games when they have like their first series opener. Uh, I'm going to lunch with the salespeople. We got some good salespeople, but the sale will go quicker if the personality is on the, you know, on the, uh, on the luncheon agenda also, right. along with the, the client. And, uh, you know, basically that's it. Wash clothes, I, you know. Okay. It's just, this is a hard job. It's like a regular job. It's well, not yeah. like I just sleep and roll up out the bed and then come down here and talk. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a job working with high school dropouts for the past uh, three years. Down by Riches? At Riches, okay. yeah. Okay, okay. But okay. Uh, them Negroes down there got jealous of all my talent and the, the Uncle Tom's at the Board of Education put, put pressure on them weak Negroes. <laughs> You're not talking about Glover, are you? Huh? You're not talking about Glover, are you? No, I'm talking about... Punk Bob Weymer, that punk, <laughs> that maggot Bob Weymer. He's a maggot. Okay. The best he'll ever be is a fly. Okay. And he buzzed on on my job and lit one of them maggots on my job. So you had to go. Yeah, I had one of them buck dancing preachers down there who was jealous of all the women coming to see me and the phone calls I was getting. You know, and, and I was making I was making them look bad doing the job that I was supposed to be doing. You know how on a job it's like two kind of Negroes. Yeah. It's them that work and them that watch those that work. Right. You know, they got to watch you to get something on you. Right. Hey, so you know, I saw, I saw Ralph. Look like he blinked his eye. You think he could be high? You know, I saw Ralph. He stumbled. Do you think he could be drunk? Mm -hmm. You know, they watching you. Ralph came back two minutes off his break. They have people actually calling my job. Saying what time that nigga Ralph come to work? <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Ralph, Ralph. Ralph. My own people. Ralph. My own people. And I had a buck dancing, 500 pound baby elephant preacher <laughs> over there who, who was just jealous. <laughs> All my ideas worked. His ideas didn't work. All the children loved me. The children hated him. You know, and I was getting all the play. He said, well, I'm going to put it. They put me. I'm going to tell you what the last straw was. <laughs> I had an office. I had the most well-decorated office. They had been in the building where we moved for about three years. And when I came over there, I found the office. Went in the office and fixed it up, put all kind of African stuff in there and all my little stuff on the wall. And had a beautiful office. Mm -hmm. Lady got jealous. What he done with that office? You know, got mad at me because she didn't have the creativity to find the same job, the same office that I had in that building. She'd been over there all of that time. She got jealous. So they moved me out the office, put me at the end of the hall by a door. And this was like in January when it, when it was like four degrees <laughs> by a door with no phone, couldn't read the paper, and had to be at work at 8 and leave at 4 and had a 30-minute lunch hour. That's slavery, man. 
So I left that and, and tripled my income. Three hundred dollars a week. That wasn't no money, man. No. When I sit down and eat dinner and swallow some, uh, when I swallow some T-bone steak with these white folks, they say, "Ralph, can you sell so and so?" I say, "Yes, sir, I can sell it. Yes, sir, I can sell it." I, I get up from the table with four, five hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. And then I go out there and got the bow and scrape. Everybody gonna be my boss. Ralph, tell me, what? I know I've heard you mention a couple of times about some schools you're attending.